<laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Starfield. The game came out and I can't stop playing it. In fact, I'm even rushing this video because I want to play some more. Hi, today we're going to be making a circular camera overlay inspired by Starfield. Whatever we make will be available for free. It's going to be on photopia.com, so it's also free to edit and do whatever you want with it. This video is not sponsored. However, I have two messages that I want to communicate. First of all, if you're looking for a Starfield inspired intermission screen, go to my Twitter. I already made one and I posted it. But if you go at the end of the, if you go to the link at the end of the thread, you'll see that there's actually a whole bunch of colors there's also no colors if you want to so there's a bunch of versions those are not templates those are png images basically with transparent backgrounds here that you can just put your camera and put whatever you want to put the second thing i want to communicate is that my friend Daylo is starting a custom neon sign business and i'm actually trying to help her raise the funds in order to buy a co2 laser this is something that will help her basically cut the acrylic a little bit better and of course faster i've seen the tools he's been using she's great like she makes great 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 products you can even order already but i do believe that she would be better with better tools anyways you can fund as little as five dollars the link will be at the top of the description i would absolutely appreciate it plus we're using throne so if you would like for your face for example to be in the leaderboard and things like that it will absolutely happen so go to the link in the description or just go to throne.com slash daylo let's start the video so the very first step is to go to photop.com there it is i'm gonna click new project this is not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial because well i give you the template anyways 1080p let's go 300 for the dpi i'm just gonna say what i'm doing i'm gonna set the background to black right there i'm also gonna have uh, my keyboard input so if there's something that i do without saying it you'll know what it is but basically we're gonna be inspired by the ui for the map in the game so it's all gonna be circular i'm also gonna show you how to set up a circular webcam in obs in case you didn't know all right so it's gonna be very minimal very very simple i'm gonna go click on the shape tool here i'm gonna find ellipse and then we're gonna create a couple of circles right we want them to be kind of in the middle Control a to select everything go back to the move tool with v and then align here nice press u to back to go back to the shape tool so, so that you can have the options up here i'm gonna make this one transparent and i'm gonna have a stroke i might have a stroke uh <laughs> i'm gonna have an outline basically be white and here i can select how thick i want it to be extra thick five pixels seems cool to me for now at least cool what we're gonna do now is duplicate there's multiple ways of doing it i'm gonna hold alt with the move tool selected i'm gonna hold alt click and drag boom there's another one i'm gonna press ctrl alt t to transform this is a big one you want to remember and i'm gonna hold alt on my keyboard so that i can drag from the middle and i'm gonna create basically the thickness of the webcam overall it's gonna be pretty thin so it's not something that you will need to stress too much about there you go press u to go back to the properties here i'm gonna lower the thickness of the border 0.6 yeah i think that looks okay i'm gonna duplicate it the one that we just created yes and this time i actually want to fill it with black because i uh want this to be kind of transparent later on or maybe i want gray i think in the game the the map is actually kind of gray let's go with a gray at least it'll be more visible that way nice this one i do not need to have a border so i'm going to turn off the stroke and basically i'm going to use the first one here in order to create a mask so i'm going to press control on my keyboard and click on the shape one icon there you go i'm going to press control plus to zoom in and i'm realizing that it's actually selecting just the border which is not necessarily what i want so i'm going to control d to deselect i am going to temporarily add a fill to it so that it selects everything so I'm just adding the fill here. You can see it, but basically that's what it is. Press control and then click on the icon again. And now I have a proper selection. I'm gonna click on my bottom layer and I'm going to click on add raster mask. Cool. Now that's not exactly what the mask needs to be. I'm gonna hold alt and click on the mask to visualize it. So white reveal black hides. I'm gonna click on it again while holding alt to go back to the normal view. I'm gonna press control I to invert the mask. There you go. So now basically we are hiding in the middle and then we're revealing everything that's outside of that middle circle. So the mask would look like, of course, black in the middle, white everywhere else. Nice. Okay, cool. Basic, very basic masking and stuff. I'm going to turn on the shape one again. I'm going to remove the fill. There we go. Wait. Oh, some. Oh, I messed up. Instead of removing the fill, uh, <laughs> I did the opposite. Okay. I'm going to bring back the border because that's what I accidentally removed. 
Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, now what we can do is add just a little bit of decoration because that is pretty much the whole principle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on parametric shape. I'm gonna make sure that there's three sides. I wanna create a triangle, but I want them to be centered. I want it to be centered. There's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna hold shift in order for it to maintain proper angles like that. Nice. I'm gonna kind of eyeball where the center is. It doesn't really matter anyways. So control A to, to select everything, press V and then boom, I'm, I just centered it by aligning it, aligning it horizontally. Control D to deselect. And now I'm gonna put it on top of at least this one. Press U to bring back the properties. And I want this to be maybe a lighter gray. Nice, I think that's really nice. Now, all I want is to have it, of course, we don't need the middle part and we don't want the outer part either. Now there's multiple ways of going about it. What I'm gonna do is hold Alt and uh, hover over the mask and I'm gonna click and drag that mask onto my shape too. So it's gonna apply the same mask. Remember that mask? Boom, right? But now we want an outer mask. So what I'm gonna do is press control and then click on that circle, the, the main circle. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go on my mask. I'm holding alt, clicking on the mask to see it. And all I have to do right now is basically turn the outer part of that selection to black. Right? So how do we invert a selection again? Control shift I. And then of course you can just paint with the brush tool if you wanted to, Oops. right? But we ain't nobody got time for that. We're gonna find the paint bucket tool. Remember the paint bucket tool from MS Paint? So you press G or you just click on the gradient tool. They're bunched up together. Uh, you make sure that black is your foreground color. Opacity is hundred and boop, congrats. You created the mask that you want. Now you can hold alt, click on the mask again. And this is what it all looks like. I uh, happen to not really, really like the color. I'm gonna double click on the icon, make it a little bit brighter. We're gonna lower the transparency on those anyways. All right, so the background layer, I would like to invert it. I'm gonna press control I because I want to add a shadow to that darker shape here. So I'm gonna click on it, and then I'm gonna click on effects at the bottom here, or layer style, and I'm gonna go find drop shadow. Distance, we definitely want it to be at zero because we want it to be coming from the middle. And then we're gonna play with the size a little bit, not too dramatic, but also remember this is gonna be very small. I'm gonna play with the opacity, see how far it goes. Okay, not bad. Uh, it's gonna be normal anyways for the blending mode. Gonna lower it. Nice. And now with that shape still um, selected, I'm gonna lower the fill. And that is the transparency that I was talking about. Okay, 62% looks good. Then I'm gonna find that triangle that we created, shape two. Now I'm also gonna lower the fill a little bit, about 64. I'm actually gonna make it even brighter so it's really visible. There you go. Nice, gonna select the background. Reverse it again, and this is pretty much what we created. It is very simple. I should leave it like that. It would actually really, really match uh, the game, but I wanna add a little bit more. I'm gonna go to my ruler up top here. If it doesn't appear, control R. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to percent. That way I can drag the side here and bring something at 50%. Bring the top here at 50%. So now we know where our middle is. Um, and the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna create some extra shapes. I'm gonna go to ellipse again, and I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna hold alt to drag from the middle. I'm gonna hold shift to make sure that it's a perfect circle. Okay, that's cool. It created one with just the border. I'm gonna lower the border thickness here. So that's good. I'm gonna duplicate that one, hold alt, to click drag i'm gonna fill it with white remove the border hold Control alt t to transform and then hold alt to drag from the middle there you go see how big that is okay that's fine i'm going to select both of those i'm holding shift Control g to group them v for the move tool and then i'm basically gonna move this to one side like that then the second way to duplicate stuff is by holding alt and then dragging Clicking and dragging, sorry. I'm gonna use that here. That, I'm just gonna eyeball it. That looks good. If you wanna get rid of the guides, I think control period is the button. It is, it is not, I keep forgetting. But you can go to view, show guides, there it is. Oh, it's control plus semicolon. All right, I like it, but I can probably add another one at the bottom. All right, in my quest to add more details, I'm gonna take this shape here, which is just an outline. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna control alt T, make it a little bit bigger like that. And then uh, on the stroke uh, options, I'm gonna make that smaller. And over there, or where you see the line, I'm gonna create a dotted line. Nice. You could keep it like that if you want. I'm gonna create a mask so it appears only on top of that triangle shape. It was named shape two. Hover over it, hold control, click on the icon. So only the triangle is selected. Where was my dotted line? There it is. <laughs> With the dotted line selected, you wanna create a mask. That's it. Now, if you click away, 
it only appears there. I think that looks pretty fine. We can turn off the grids, control minus to zoom out. Yeah. That's it. Very simple. You want to turn off the background and then you want to go to file, export as PNG, click save and call it whatever you want. Now, while we're here, we can also create a mask. Um, let me go to file, new 1080p for the dimensions. Background, we want it to be black and we are going to create a perfect circle in the middle. I'm going to click, drag, holding shift to keep it proportional. That looks OK. Control A to control, well, to control, control A to select everything, V to pick the move tool, and then you can align here, both horizontally and vertically. Control D to deselect, uh, U to go back to the shape tool so you can see that you can fill this right there. Turn off the stroke, you don't need it. There you go. That's all you need to create a mask for your camera that you're going to use in OBS, basically. Remember the principles of white reveals, black hides, we're going to use the same thing. It can also be the opposite. OBS gives you that option. So file export as PNG, save. Uh, we're going to call this one alpha mask, even though technically it's a Luma mask. Now in OBS a studio, uh, click plus image, name it what you want. Go to browse, find the image you just created. And there it is. That's how you add the camera overlay. You know what? I actually recommend you to put it to a brand new scene. In fact, I even recommend you to put your camera in another scene. And I'm going to explain why. So new scene. This one is going to be just for the camera uh, video capture device. I'm going to add the camera that I already have. It is so hot in here. And then we are going to add that camera. So scene three, basically, we're going to add that to this scene. And the reason why we're doing this is that we're going to apply the filter, right? The mask, and we're just going to apply it to that scene and not to the camera. So if you want your camera widescreen and normal everywhere else, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Scene and we want the scene with the camera. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Now you can right click and go to filters or just go to filters. That's right there with this selected. And you want to go to image mask blend. Is that what it's called? Yes. Right there. Click OK. And then alpha mask color channel. You want to go browse, find your alpha. Boom, 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 boom. You did it. You did it. You have a circular webcam. Hi, you can modify it uh, if you want it to be cropped in a little bit more by modifying this to be well, smaller, basically a smaller circle. We want the, ca the camera overlay to be on top of it. So drag, drop on top. Nice. And now we can adjust by clicking on scene three and just doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We can fill it like this. Technically, I created it so that it would be more like that. So that's why it's more like me and it's less like you. And I know And if you want to center your camera easily, right click transform center to screen or press control D. There you go. It's like that. You have you, you manage. You did it. You have a Starfield inspired camera overlay. Now, above everything, if you want this to be extra fancy, you can add whatever color you want. You can also animate it. You can also animate it in OBS. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that you can do animations within OBS. Uh, you can maybe have animations triggered through StreamerBot, for example. Every time you get a follow, uh, the thing rotates 180 degrees or 360 degrees. You know what? Let me quickly see how I would do that. Uh, so webcam overlay, I'm going to press control E to edit because this is where I'm going to have like rotation functions and things like that. Positional alignment, I would want that to be center. OK, cool. It's going to bring us over there. That's fine. Right click, transform, center the screen. Remember that control D. There you go. And now I can right click on that scene filters, move source, right? And the source that I want to move is the camera overlay. So this is the normal state. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click get transform. I'm going to duplicate this filter so that I can have the second movement. Basically move source two doesn't matter. Right. And this time for rotation, I can click on this control E and I could type 360. So it would bring me back to the same thing, but basically it did a full rotation there. But now if I click close and I make sure that on move source two, I click get transform. As you can see, rotation 360. I could have just typed it here too, right? I can turn this one on. <laughs> nice. And of course, I can set the custom duration. Let's go with three seconds for each. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> So yeah, you can make that happen through streamer bot. Just, you know, turn filter on. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And assign it to alert. Watch my other videos if you want to learn all that, all that stuff. All right. If you want access to it, it's very simple. You go to photop.com. It's free. You go to templates. 
It's probably going to appear up top here, but it might not be. There it is. It's here. We can just type my name. Not only you're going to see that one, but you're also going to see all of the other projects that are completely free and accessible. I have Overwatch overlay. I have a Valorant starting soon screen. I have some Fortnite overlays. Anyways, you can go here, click on it and then click there or wherever. It's going to take a couple of seconds and then it's going to open it. Of course, there's a background here. We don't want that. There's text. We don't want that. So all we have to do is turn that off, turn that off and we can export file export as PNG. Remember, I also included the alpha right there on top. That's the top layer. So if you want your circular webcam without having to create the circle and center it and all that, you can also just turn on that layer, file, export PNG. That simple. Now back in OBS, since we have our whole thing right here in a, in its own scene, we can easily go ahead and just add it by clicking on plus scene at existing and just adding it. Boom, there it is. We'll have to resize it and just place it wherever we want. Maybe you want it here. I should show Starfield gameplay, but I don't have anything saved on my computer right now. And this is what it looks like, basically. You can even flip it, transform, flip, flip horizontal. There you go. That makes more sense. Okay, and those filters, still there. Absolutely still there. Anyways, time to go play some more. Make sure you check out the links in the description. I would really, really, really appreciate it if you could help out with the funding of the laser for Daylo. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Go out there, make me proud. Get level out.